The question of how flight first evolved has been one of the most fascinating yet difficult to answer questions in evolutionary biology, as early fossils are extremely rare. Despite this, the question still inspired many interesting ideas and theories that try to answer the question, how did flight originate? Perhaps the most fascinating fact of flight is how it convergently evolved on four separate occasions in insects, pterosaurs, birds and bats. Convergent evolution is when unrelated or distantly related organisms independently evolve similar traits as similar environmental pressures favour the development of similar features. Another example of convergent evolution is echolocation which has evolved independently in two very different lineages, bats and dolphins. Both have adapted to live in seemingly very different environments, but one feature both environments have in common is that they have very limited amounts of light, making it difficult for predators to detect prey using vision. This pressures the predators into developing other ways to locate their prey, and these two animals convergently evolved the same method for doing so. Flight has many benefits, it gives you the ability to travel long distances, to avoid predators and to locate food. However, there are many different levels of flight which have evolved many different times in the animal kingdom. There's parachuting, which would allow you to be carried by the wind. This method of air travel has been adapted many times in plants as a way to disperse seeds. It can also be observed in spider hatchlings that create balloons made out of silk so they can be carried away from the nest. There's gliding, which allows you to cover great distances without using much energy. This has evolved several times in reptiles, mammals and even fish. True flight gives the most control in the air and can only be achieved with wings. Unlike gliders and parachuters, Flyers are able to ascend by flapping their wings. Some flyers are also capable of soaring, which takes advantage of rising air currents to travel extremely long distances without using much energy. This method of travelling in the air has only been achieved by some large birds, such as albatross, as well as large pterosaurs. The evolution of terrestrial animals opened up a whole new world to our ancestors, not only were they able to explore the land, but the skies became more accessible than ever. In a world with no flying animals, it was inevitable that creatures would evolve to take advantage of the newfound domain, and the first creatures to do so were also the ones that first walked on land, the arthropods. The first instance of flight in arthropods is still a highly debated subject in evolutionary biology as fossils for early arthropods are extremely rare for reasons still unknown. This gap in fossils has been dubbed the hexapod gap, but despite this, it is still widely believed that the first animals to take to the skies were insects that lived between 350 and 400 million years ago during the Carboniferous. There are many theories that try explaining how the first wings evolved. One of the theories is that they started out as gills, such as those seen in the aquatic nymphs of mayflies. But upon further analysis, it was found that Polyneoptera, the group of winged insects that include grasshoppers, evolved from terrestrial ancestors, making that idea unlikely. Recent evidence from studying nymphs of ancient insects called Paleodictyoptera support the theory that the first wings didn't evolve for flight, but rather to aid in thermoregulation. Paleodictyoptera are an extinct order of six-winged insects from the Carboniferous period and are one of the earliest known records of true flight. Studies of the nymphs have shown that they had two pairs of wings on the thorax as well as a pair of lobes on the prothorax which they retained to adulthood. As the nymphs developed, the wings became more articulated and eventually enabled the insect to fly in adulthood. But they still served a purpose even during the nymph phase. While the wings were not articulated enough to be flapped, they still served a purpose in thermoregulation. Many veins have been found spread across the wings 
enabling the insect to warm up quicker by basking in the sun. This gave them a great advantage over other non-winged insects at the time as they were able to become active a lot sooner in the day. This supports the theory that ancestors of Paleodictyoptera and all flying insects had developed the first proto-wings to thermoregulate and what drove the wings to become larger was the fact that higher surface area allowed the insects to thermoregulate more effectively. The wings eventually evolved to become articulated enough for gliding to escape predators and then possibly through an evolutionary arms race between predator and prey would eventually lead to the first flying insects. The so next in line and also the first vertebrates to evolve flight were a group of reptiles called pterosaurs which first appeared in the late Triassic 185 million years after insects evolved flight. Contrary to popular belief, pterosaurs are not dinosaurs but are closely related cousins belonging to the same clade, Ornithodera, making them more closely related to dinosaurs than crocodiles but are all part of a larger group called Archosauria. Pterosaurs had many adaptations that made them excellent flyers. Like modern birds, they had light hollow bones making even the largest pterosaurs surprisingly lightweight. For comparison, it's estimated that Quetzalcoatlus, one of the largest known flying pterosaurs, only weighed 200 kilograms, making it five times lighter than a giraffe, which can weigh over 1,000. They have even evolved a unique bone called the pteroid bone, which was used to support part of the wing membrane, helping them achieve such large wingspans up to 11 meters in length. How flight first evolved in pterosaurs is a difficult question to answer, as fossil records are difficult to come by, likely because the bones were so hollow, they were rarely preserved. The few early pterosaur fossils we do have already have all these adaptations that made them such excellent flyers. Nonetheless, there are many theories that try to answer the question. One theory suggests that ancestors of pterosaurs were terrestrial insectivores and leapt into the air to catch insects. These ancestors could have adapted a skin membrane between their limbs, giving them better control in the air and over many generations, their limbs would evolve into wings. This theory however is unlikely, as fossil footprints show that pterosaurs were quadrupeds and used their wings for walking by folding them in. They also used them to help launch themselves into the air. A possible ancestor to pterosaurs could be a genus of small archosaurs called Sgrelomoclus, which had many skeletal features that resembled pterosaurs, only it wasn't able to fly. Early studies about its gait suggest that it moved by hopping like kangaroos, and thus was not arboreal like some theories suggest. But a recent reassessment now suggests that it moved more like a frog would, and that it was not an ornithodiran like pterosaurs, but instead belonged to a sister taxon to pterosaurs, making the theory that Scrolomoclus was an ancestor to pterosaurs unlikely. Another theory suggests that ancestors of pterosaurs were arboreal and had adapted skin membrane as a parachute, allowing them to descend from high tree branches more easily and reduce the likelihood of injury. These adaptations can be seen in modern reptiles like Draco lizards, but this would not explain how pterosaurs became so well adapted at taking off from the ground. It's much more likely that instead of parachuting down, pterosaur ancestors evolved a membrane to leap from tree to tree, similar to what flying squirrels do today.